Good morning, church. It's good to see faithful souls here in the midst of the challenges of the day, is it not? Between the temperature and the Steeler game and parking and traffic, thanks for making the extra effort to be here today. Our service today is different than the norm here at Calvary. And if those of us who are here on a weekly basis, you could tell immediately when you opened up the bulletin this morning, you probably thought, what happened? Well, this is the service that the Methodists have been sharing since the mid-1700s. John and Charles Wesley developed the service to enter the new year. It's a service where the words in our litany and our lyrics and the liturgical all the different prayers that you'll be saying and sharing today are from that era, from that time period. Many of them are literally word for word that for hundreds of years now, those people called Methodist have been sharing on this Sunday. So I invite you today as you reflect and read and share in the prayers and the, lit the liturgy that you keep in mind that you're part of a long lineage, if you will, of Methodists and hopefully in the years to come, we will still share the same. So welcome to Calvary United Methodist Church and let us begin with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, today we are extra conscious of the passing of time. We are aware that the years, they roll by like an ever moving stream. We are aware that you created us as creatures of time and nothing we do can stop its flow or speed it up. Lord, help us to see ourselves in the midst of this time. Help us to spend that time to believe in others as much as you believe in us, to reach out with your grace, empowering us to seek to live more perfected lives of faith as you live in and around us in this time. So forgive us, Lord, we pray, and help us to begin a new year to be much more careful of how we spend our time. Make us good stewards of the hours, the moments, the days, and the ever-flowing passing of time. So be with us, Lord, we ask and we pray, not just now, but throughout the coming year. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Please let us stand and open our hymnals in our hearts and let us sing one of the great Christmas hymns. Hark the Herald, or Angels We've Heard on High, number 238. Let us stand and let us sing.
Please join me in the call to celebration, which is printed in your bulletin. Gather us in, the lost and the lonely, the broken and breaking, the tired and the aching, who long for the nourishment found at your feast. Gather us in, the done and the doubting, the wishing and wondering, the puzzled and pondering, who long for the company found at your feast. Gather us in, the bright and the bustling, the stirs and shakers, the kind laughter makers, who long for the deeper joys found at your feast. Gather us in, from corner or limelight, from mansion or campsite, from fears and obsession, from tears and depression, from untold excesses, from treasured successes, to meet, to eat, to be given a seat at thy feast. Gather us in and let us welcome each other this day and help this church, if you will, be a place of sanctuary and warm welcome. Please welcome one another. It looks like I have all the children up front already today. Am I missing any? It looks like it's just Ezra and I. Ezra, come on, buddy. Thanks for being here today. When do we usually light candles, Ezra? Name some times when we light candles. Can you think of one? Hanukkah. Hanukkah. Uh, and how many candles do we usually light for Hanukkah? Eight. Well, that's close. I'll give you a clue up there. You see there's seven there? And for Hanukkah, we light nine. nine. Yep, there's two more than what's on those. What else? Let me give you a clue. Happy birthday to... What, what else do we... On your birthday, yes, we light candles on your birthday. Today, I'm going to ask if you would help me celebrate Jesus' birthday. Because Christmas, all month of December, we've been lighting candles. And they have reminded us of different ways that we celebrate Jesus' birth. So if you light that first candle over there, one of those is hope that we often light a candle for. Another is for love. And then this pink one over here, that reminds us of glory, God's king. That's a special Sunday in some Orthodox churches. And then also we usually light a candle for peace. And then we light the main candle. That's the birthday candle, if you will, that reminds us of Emmanuel, that God is with us. So today, Ezra, even though it's just you and I, guess what? 
we get to light the special candles together. Let us pray. Gracious God, may the lights of these candles continue to remind us of your light in our lives, in our congregation, this family of faith, in our community and beyond. We ask and we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks for being here today and every week, Ezra. You may head back to your pew or to Sunday school with Liz. As I mentioned a few moments ago, our service today is a special one, and therefore the prayers, let us begin at this point and follow in your bulletin with me that are part of the communion portion of our service today. Would you pray with me? Everlasting God, by whose mercy we have come to the gateway of another year, grant that we may enter it with humble and grateful hearts and confirm our resolution. We beseech thee to walk more closely in thy way and labor more faithfully in thy service. Let not the errors and offenses of the past cling to us, but pardon and set us free so that with purer purpose and hope we may renew our vows in thy presence and set forth under the guidance of thy spirit to travel through another year of gifts and grace. Amen. Let us give thanks for all of God's mercies. O God, our covenant friend, you have been gracious to us through all the years of our lives. We thank you for your loving care, which has filled our days and brought us to this time and place. You have given us life and reason and set us in a world filled with your glory. You have comforted us with family and friends and administered to us through the hands of our sisters and brothers. You have filled our hearts with a hunger after you and have given us peace. You have redeemed us and called us to a high calling in Christ Jesus. You have given us a place in the fellowship of your spirit and the willingness of your church. You have been our light in darkness and a rock of strength in adversity and temptation. You have been the very spirit of joy and the all-sufficient reward in all our labors. You remembered us when we forgot you. You followed us even when we tried to flee from you. You met us with forgiveness when we returned to you for all your patience and overflowing grace. We praise your holy name, O God. Amen.
We have much to be thankful for here at Calvary. Over the past year, there's many things that we can celebrate. Just last week, this day, Christmas Eve, we were able to celebrate Christmas Eve service with more individuals than ever before, perhaps in the history of this church, at least back until the 1950s. And over 415 people were present on Christmas Eve night alone. And yes, you need to be celebratory. We give thanks. It was quite an evening. And then on top of that, the year-end gifting has been overwhelming. Many that night gave extra gifts, and those online who I welcome again today, whom too often I forget to mention, hundreds of people that join us each week in our worship service with social media and online possibilities today, and their gifting as well. So a simple reminder today, this being the last day of 2017, any gift that's given will be matched by other donors of this congregation, but also any gift given today for 2018 will also be matched by a family in our congregation. As I said, Calvary has much to be thankful for. So let us continue to share our gratitude with the gifts of our tithes and our offerings. Please let us stand. As it is part of our long tradition to share gifts before we partake of your gifts. And so today, Lord, we lay these offerings upon your altar and all that we have been given over this past year and ask with your special blessing in these coming months and days before us, this fellowship, this family of faith may continue to be able to share with others the gift of the child of Bethlehem the proclamations of goodwill and peace and of love and of hope. We ask of this in thy name, and may the blessings be of the same. Amen. Please, you may be seated. 
And may we continue this morning with our litany and our service. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the Christian life is redeemed from sin and consecrated to God. Through baptism, we have entered this life and have admitted into, and were admitted into the new covenant of which Jesus Christ is the mediator. He sealed it with his own sacrifice that it might last forever. On the one side, God promises to give us new life in Christ, the source and the perfecter of our faith. On the other side, we are pledged to live no more for ourselves, but only for Jesus Christ, who loved us and gave himself for us. From time to time, we renew our covenant with God, especially when we reaffirm the baptismal covenant and gather at the Lord's table. Today we meet, as the generations before us have met, to renew the covenant that binds us to God. Let us make this covenant of God our own. Commit ourselves to Christ as his servants. Give yourselves to him that you may belong to him. Christ has many services to be done. Some are more easy and honorable. Others are more difficult and disgraceful. Some are suitable to our inclinations and interests. Others are contrary to both. In some works, we may please Christ and please ourselves. But then there are other works where we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. It is necessary, therefore, that we consider what it means to be a servant of Christ. Let us, therefore, go to Christ and pray. Let me be your servant under your command. I will no longer be my own. I will give up myself to pull your will in all things. I will put myself fully into your hands. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed for you or laid aside for you. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and with a willing heart give it all to your pleasure and disposal. For a moment of reflection today, I asked if Lynn would read from the Old Testament, from the book of Psalms, the 90th. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth in the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn us back to dust and say, turn back, you mortals, for a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, or like a watch in the night. You sweep them away, they are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed. In the evening it fades and withers. So teach us to count our days, that we may gain a wise heart. Turn, O Lord, how long? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, so that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad as many days as you have afflicted us, and as many years as we have seen evil. Let your work be manifest to your servants and your glorious power to their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and prosper for us the work of our hands. O oh, prosper the work of our hands. The word of the Lord written by the people of the Lord for the people of God. Let us give God. Well, it finally happened to me. I went looking for my glasses. I checked the den, I checked the bedroom, I looked all around the kitchen, and then I went into the bathroom, and I looked up into the mirror, and guess where they were? Oh, so you had the same thing happen to you. They were on the top of my forehead the whole time, didn't even slip or slide as I was running around the house looking for them. It was at that moment that I realized 
I have an awful lot of pair of glasses. You know, some of them are for reading, and I have a lot of those. But I also have a pair for the computer. I have a pair when I'm preaching, like right now. I have a pair of glasses when I drive at night, and a different pair of glasses when I drive during the day. I have a special pair of glasses that I do delicate work with so I can see clearly more in, if you will, smaller portions of this life of ours. And then I have another pair of glasses that I wear when I'm doing woodworking or drilling for protection. But it was also at that same moment that I gave thanks for my sight, even though I need all those glasses. Today's scripture in the Old Testament which, by the way, we don't usually read from, do we? Unless, of course, it's a funeral. Then all of us know that one of the favorite portions, even in that time of mourning, is the 23rd Psalm. But that's the only one we often read, is it not? And yet the Psalm that we read today is so fitting for the new year. And it hit me that it was like putting on different pairs of glasses that enable us to see different things. For instance, the first pair is to give thanks for the past. Did you hear the words? From everlasting to everlasting, thou art our God in all generations. You know, today's an opportunity to put on a pair of glasses and to give thanks for the past. Oh, oh not just the past 365 days, but how often have you paused and given thanks for the people who have made it possible for you to be here today, literally? Over the holidays, one of our children celebrated his 40th birthday, and we were all gathered on Neville Island. Now, for everybody or anybody else, that would mean much. It was a roller skating rink there on Neville Island, but as we pulled onto the island, I started to remember. You see, the grandparents on my father's side lived on that island, worked their entire lives. In fact, they met on another island known as Ellis Island when they were teenagers and had left Europe to come to the Promised Land. That day, <laughs> I paused. As I drove down the street, I was looking to see, was it this one they lived on, or was it this one? Bubba did not speak much English at all. She was caring for their children, quite a few of them, I might add, of which my dad was one. And they worked hard in the steel mill, in the coal mines, and in the concrete business that they were able to start in the second generation. You know, the psalm reminds us to look at the past. Put some glasses on. There's moments to cheer. There's other moments that are more sobering. There's accomplishments, and there's not just accumulations. There's missed opportunities. There's dreams achieved and some dreams maybe that need to be let go of. But today's a good day to put the glasses on and to give thanks for the past. And not just the past year, but also to remember those that gave their lives so that we might have ours. Oh, there's another pair of glasses. And that's to give thanks for today. Did you hear the words, satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, O oh God? Help us to rejoice and be glad. When was the last time you actually stopped and gave thanks for today? You know, one of our traditions at our household this time of the year is we have an opportunity to watch a good number of movies. And, of course, there's traditional ones. But as many times as I've seen them, there's always certain parts that jump out at you. You know, 
Well, there's one that I'm sure you've heard of. It's called White Christmas. And in that musical, with so many different tunes, the one that stuck out to me this year went like this. When I'm worried and I can't sleep, I count my blessings instead of sheep and I fall asleep counting my blessings. It hit me. How often do we go through a day with the list of things that needs to be done and forget about something that should be done? counting our blessings today, every day. The scripture reminds us the Lord satisfies us in the morning with our Lord's steadfast love. When's the last time you gave thanks? Oh yes, there's another pair of glasses. My favorite phrase, frankly, of this psalm is teach us to number our days. Now that's the RSV version. The new RSV version that we just read this morning is to teach us to count our days so that we might gain a wise heart. Let the favor of our Lord our God be upon us and prosper the work of our hands. I'd like us to think this year not just of an opportunity to make resolutions, but a prayerful, led, faithful solutions. There's a difference. The scripture reminds us that this is a time when we can pause and also prayerfully ask for God's direction into the future. The coming year, just the next day, will do for now. But what is it that God is asking you to do with your time? You know, time is a precious commodity, is it not? One month, what's it worth? Well, you can ask a mother of a premature baby that question, and you get an answer. One hour, what's it worth? Well, you can ask two lovers that haven't seen each other for a year and the plane is almost there. One minute, what's it worth? Well, you have a different answer if you just missed your flight by 60 seconds. Or one second, what's it worth? Well, if you just avoided a car accident, you know. Or one-tenth of a second, what's it worth? Well, you can ask the person on the Olympic stand who is being given the silver medal. <laughs> they know. You know, our scripture helps us to put on some different visual aids this morning. They not only assist our sight, but they assist our insight. A new year, the gift of time. How will you use yours? The three people arrived at the pearly gates. You know how these stories go. They're waiting on St. Peter, and St. Peter comes to the door, the gate, and says, I need a few moments. I'm sorry, I've just been called by the Almighty. I will be right back. But he is not. He's gone for some time. So the first person, when he finally returns, is at the gate, and Peter opens and says, I hope you didn't mind waiting. It took a long time. She said, oh no, I've been looking forward to getting here my entire life. What's a few more moments? I am just so thankful. So Peter looked at her and said, well then I only have one question. How do you spell God? She smiled and said a capital G, O-D. And Peter said, come right in. The second person, came up and Peter said to him, Sir, I'm sorry that you've been waiting so much time. Uh, did you mind? And, and he said, Oh, no, no, I've been in this for my entire life. I've been praying and sharing. I've been loving and forgiving. I've done my very best to be in God's hands. 
I am just thankful to be considered even to be here. Peter smiled and said, I just have one question. How do you spell God? He looked at Peter and said, well, capital G-O-D. And Peter said, go right in. The third person came up and Peter said, I am so sorry for making you wasting your time and standing in line. And she got a little indignant and said, yes, I did. I spent my entire life waiting in lines at stores, in schools, at work. I sure didn't expect it to happen here. And Peter looked at her and said, I'm sorry, but I only have one question for you. How do you spell Czechoslovakia? <laughs> you got it. Time is a precious commodity. It's something that we can waste or be angry about or be upset about or it's something we can be thankful for. I guess it just depends on which pair of glasses you put on today, tomorrow, and for the coming year. Amen? Amen. As you remain seated, I'm going to ask if we would go ahead and open our hymnals and our hearts and let us sing Hymn number 614, For the Bread Which You Have Broken. Remain seated, let us sing. When the covenant of the Lord's Supper was first created, Jesus took the bread at the time of the Passover and broke the bread and said, this is the new covenant, his body broken for us. He asked those there then and those of us now, his followers, to take and eat of this bread as oft as they shall in remembrance of him. Lord, we break this bread today in thy presence and ask for your presence to be within it. And then taking the cup, Jesus also from the table where Emmanuel was to be served, asked that this cup now be of the new covenant and shed in his name. And as often as we would drink from this cup, we would do so in remembrance of Jesus Christ. Let us drink this day from this cup in remembrance of him and ask the Lord's blessing upon it and upon us. I remind you that the communion at this family of faith is an open table. Everyone is welcome to come forward today or we will bring communion to you. And it is no longer a necessity that you be a member of this congregation or any congregation. Everyone is welcome to come forward. We'll practice by intinction today. We're taking a portion of the bread, touching it into the cup, and then taking and eating of this sacrament of forgiveness and of courage and strength. 
the table is prepared, please, as you are ushered to come forward, please come forward and receive the sacrament of Holy Communion.
May we conclude our service of communion. We do here willingly place ourselves under your yoke to carry your burden. All your laws are holy, just, and good. We therefore take them as a rule for our words, thoughts, and actions, promising that we will strive in, to order our whole lives according to your direction. O oh God, you know that we reaffirm this covenant with you today without reservation. If any falsehood should be in it, guide us and help us to set it aright. And now glory be to you, O oh God the Father, whom we from this day forward shall look upon as our God and Father. Glory be to you, O God the Son, who has loved us and washed us from our sins. Glory be to you, O God the Holy Spirit, who by your almighty power has turned our hearts from sin to God. O mighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are our covenant friend, and we, through your infinite grace, have become your covenant servant. So be it, and let the covenant I have made on earth be ratified in heaven. Amen. Let us stand and let us sing. Tell it on the mountains, over the hills, and everywhere. I go tell it, I tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Just two quick reminders this morning. I was asked to remind the young adults among us that this coming Thursday, January the 4th, you'll be meeting at 8 o'clock. We didn't get that into the bulletin this week. And you'll be at Sanctuary in Lawrenceville at 8 o'clock this coming Thursday evening, the young adults of our sanctuary and of our church. Also, I wanted to remind people that we need sponsors for the fellowship meal that takes place every Sunday after church. And Doug is downstairs today prepared with a, a light meal as well. And if you are able to sponsor one in January, please see him and let him know. Let us receive the benediction. Gracious God, 
for a season of Advent and Christmas. Beyond all hope and all dream, we give thee thanks. For a year filled with so many blessings, we pause to give you thanks. For the opportunity to remember those who have come before us, that have made it possible for this place, for its beauty, but also for its calling and direction, we give thee thanks. And now as we go our separate ways, may those spirits and the gift of those spirits hold us together in unity so that tomorrow and the coming years may be blessed with something very similar because of the people of faith have been here and will always be. Till we meet again, may the Lord's face shine upon you and may we be blessed and may the Lord be with us. And until we meet again, may we continue to find new ways to be with our Lord. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.